Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Finance Minister Tito Mboweni released a draft economic policy document for public comment this week. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the paper and the prospects for its adoption. Hi Terence. Hi Sonal. The release of the paper has been described as surprising. Why is that? I think it's mostly surprising, not because of the context. The context is one of dire fiscal position. We know we've got falling revenues and rising debt and huge demands on the fiscus. And then we've also got this very low growth in the South African economy. So the, in that context, you need an economic policy. What's surprising is the method that the finance minister has used to take this to the public. Traditionally, this has been very much an insider's game where it's consulted heavily with inside the African National Congress and within the alliance. And then it is taken to the social partners more broadly and then released. So there's a lot of vested interests uh, that get, uh, get what they want in the, in the package and they usually have prior sight. In this instance, the finance ministers decided to put out a public uh, document or a discussion document following some consultations, not with insiders, but with various uh, economic economists, both local and international, and various stakeholders, and has decided uh, to release a 77-page uh, document with something like 14 pages of references, so an evidence-based document, uh, which uh, is, is different in terms of the way traditionally South Africans engage with public policy or economic policy. What about the content? Is that also surprising? Yes and no. There's a lot in there that's been canvassed before. I think it's just more strident on a number of issues. We are definitely do see a changes on some of the network industry discussion, the discussion around ESKIM. We know that government's already decided to unbundle ESKIM, so it's no surprise that it's reinforced in this document. Where it does, where, where there's more surprise, I suppose, is that uh, that the, the, the discussion in in this um, uh, treasury document around the sale of so, uh, the coal-fired generation assets has not really been the narrative around the unbundling of ESKIM. It's really been a narrative of one that we're going to have three state-owned enterprises, one of generation, one of dis uh, uh, tr transmission and one of distribution, but they will all remain publicly owned. This document raises the prospect of maybe selling aspects of the business. Uh, now this is obviously something that society has discussed, but it's not something that the ANC or the Alliance would have necessarily discussed or concluded on. Uh, so that would be somewhat surprising. Then I think even his cabinet colleagues, uh, there will be a number of eyebrows raised. He makes some strident remarks, uh, or the Treasury does, around industrial policy and that it's too diffuse and needs to be tightened up. There are too many sectors that are being supported, 13 listed in the latest industrial policy action plan. There's uh, issues around the planning, for instance, in the electricity and the, the time it's taking to get to a final integrated energy plan and an integrated resource plan. They need to move that at a faster pace, which I think everyone would agree with. I mean, the latest integrated resource plan uh, was published for public comment uh, this time last year, and we still do not have a final document. It's unacceptable. So th there's those sort of things, also around the visa regime, which everyone would agree with, or most people would agree with. And then around dealing with our skills crisis, obviously improving the educational outcomes, but also looking to maybe having a system of bringing in uh, immigrant skills, which is also contentious in society, but it's something where skills we know is like electricity. Skills is a constraint on growth um, and, and investment because you need some of these skills to bring in some of the new investment. So these are all raised. These are very uh, hot topics in society but they are not necessarily topics that uh, the Alliance or the ANC have concluded that there's a certain line of march that we should take that's aligned with the, the National Treasury document. So yes, there is a definitely elements within there that the, the content is also surprising. What is the likelihood of the plan being adopted? Well, I think, uh, I suppose what is really happening here is the finance minister is moving to try and change the, the political economy narrative. So as I say, we've got this consensus building, um, the massaging of vested interests, 
uh, process that we've always taken in the past and that hasn't really gotten us to a point where we are getting the growth outcomes um, uh, and eventually the fiscal outcomes that we need. In fact, we're in a very, very bad uh, position. So we do need to think maybe somewhat differently and we need to change the debate about the political economy narrative, I think, the conversation, to one that's, that has been in the past very much state-led, uh, so through the state-owned companies, through government departments, through the government balance sheet. That government balance sheet is totally stretched, it's threadbare, as is the balance sheet and the firepower at the state-owned companies. So the golden thread, I suppose, here is that we're going to need to lean more and more on private uh, capital, private skills to get uh, some of the uh, public infrastructure, for instance, and other uh, uh, aspects of the, of the economy going again. So I think it's really about shifting the debate whether what the outcome is in the, uh, the policy, the final policy document is reflected in the current version it's probably unlikely there's going to be uh, a lot of pushback, not only um, uh, externally in society and from opposition parties uh, where there'll be critique of it, but there'll be also a lot of critique inside the, the African National Congress and the Alliance. I mean, there's already the word that uh, the minister has gone rogue, but I think it's really about trying to change the conversation from one where the state can lead and do it all to one where it's really going to be about the private sector led um, the growth agenda for the foreseeable future and that is basically just reality biting. The reality is that government just doesn't have the firepower financially and the capacity skills wise to lead us out of this low growth trap. So it's, it's really a case I think of necessity being the mother of invention here yeah? and the necessity being that we need to get this economy growing again, we need investment and uh, it's not going to come out of the Eskims and the Transnets and the prices anymore. It's going to definitely need to come out of the private sector. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.